Welcome back. Now, it is a staggering statistic. Five billion people worldwide don't have access to safe and affordable surgery when they need it. That's two-thirds of the world's population. Now, a team of experts spent 18 months gathering evidence from 100 countries, and their findings have been published in the Lancet Medical Journal. They found that about a third of all deaths are from conditions that are treatable with surgery. Every year, more than 300 million operations are performed worldwide, but just one in 20 occur in the poorest countries. The report's authors say $420 billion of investment is needed to fix a problem that they say is largely being ignored by the global health community. Well, let's talk about this for the next few minutes because joining me is Andy Leather, who is a doctor and one of the report's authors and the director of the King's Centre for Global Health at King's College in London. And also with us is Dr Shane Duffy, a London-based obstetrician and gynaecologist who's just come back from a surgical training trip in Uganda. Thanks to both of you for being with us today on Global. Andy Leather to you first of all. I mean I was really surprised by this to read that statistics of two-thirds of the world's population not having access. I mean that is that is staggering. It is it is staggering and it's 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 a serious problem. Up to now we've um, believed that it's a, the figure was about two billion and that was based on operating theatre density. But actually we've looked a little deeper and we've looked at can people get to the facility, the hospital, in time and can they afford it when they get there and is it safe and using those four aspects those four dimensions of access safety timeliness affordability and safety we come up with this figure of, of five billion um, and people therefore are dying of obstru in obstructed labor they're dying of acute um, abdominal problems or they're dying after a road traffic accident unnecessarily and you say all, all of those a whole category of conditions are, are perfectly treatable if the surgery is available is that right absolutely so all and of that is avoidable we think it is we think that 80 percent or more of surgical procedures can be done at the first level hospital the district hospital in the community and if those hospitals were able to perform three operations the cesarean section the abdominal operation for a catastrophe and a fracture fixation the study shows that they can probably do all sorts of other necessary surgical procedures i'll come back to to why we're in this position mm. in a moment but uh, dr duffy tell me you've just come back from from uh, uganda mm. so tell me the sort of work you were you were doing there and, and what you were finding on the ground so i work as an obstetrician and gynecologist uh, specializing in maternity childbirth care and treating the con conditions that occur, the complications that can occur from that. So while I was there, we were performing emergency surgery for ladies that had obstructed labors, um, and we also repaired um, holes in that, were, that occurred between bladders and bowel, and they're called fistulas. Uh, and without that surgery, what are the consequences? Fatal, as we were just discussing there? Yes, so unfortunately for ladies who have obstructed labor, if you can't get a cesarean section, Either your baby will die or you will die. Uh, Dr. Leather, I, I mean, I, I said to you we'll talk about w the whys because you have this whole global health push and it is everywhere when you look around. So uh, uh, what, why is this particular area not part of the progress we're seeing on all manner of different levels? It's a very important question. Essentially, the whole global health agenda has focused on vertical programs, specific diseases, important though they are, HIV, TB, malaria, for instance, and there's been far less of a focus on strengthening the health system. And you need a strong health system with safe blood and operating theatres and trained staff to deliver surgical care. And there therefore needs to be a, a, a realignment of the global health agenda so that we strengthen the whole health system. And only then will we be able to provide safe surgery. Uh, when you look at the cost, I, I read out uh, the, the cost there in the hundreds of billions. I mean, do you think it's realistic to talk about that as being uh, the answer when one thinks of Ebola, for example, that was absolutely in front of us uh, over the last few months, where you had people dying virtually on camera, the whole of the world could see it, mm -hmm. and yet there was a, a really sluggish global response. So, so this being out of sight, what chance of those sorts of sums of money to fix it? Well, it's interesting. I've been in and out of Sierra Leone myself uh, a lot over the last few years, and my team's working on the Ebola crisis. And it, it's also a, another good question. I think Ebo the Ebola crisis would have been far less of a crisis if we had strong health systems. Uh, and that's what we're calling for. But on the issue of can we afford it, 
I think we, I would turn it around saying it's a good investment because the Commission report shows